Sea men of the Gulf have always been eager to set sail and to battle against surging waves and roaring winds. Every morning, the salty drops of the blue sea rested on their skin, burnt by the strong sun. They picked up their simple, indeed primitive tools to chase their catch. But with a will as determined as a mountain, they filled their boats with all kinds of fresh fish and sailed back home with pride. The traditional fishermen of the Gulf set off to work before the break of dawn and sailed back to land at dusk, intending to sell their catch at the markets of the cities and villages clustered along the Arabian Gulf. The people of the Gulf have historically worked in the fishing profession. On the decks of their traditional boats, they combated huge waves to reach the distant depths of the Gulf where there was an abundance of fish to catch and pearls to dive for. Pearl diving was among the most significant sources of income for the people of the Gulf. The beds of pearl-bearing oysters in the Arabian Gulf were considered to be the most important of their kind and were famed for their quality. Divers sailed out to these beds in certain seasons in their quest for the precious pearls of the Arabian Gulf. The six GCC countries, the Sultanate of Oman, the United Arab Emirates, the State of Qatar, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Kingdom of Bahrain, and the State of Kuwait, overlook massive seawaters that are estimated at 400,000 square kilometers. The length of the coast exceeds 6,000 kilometers and stretches from the Red Sea to the Gulf of Oman. This, together with the climate of the region, makes it a perfect place for fish to reproduce and breed, and has turned the area into one of the most important sources of fish, both in terms of numbers and diversity. The size of the region's fisheries is estimated at 1,200 tons. Al Bidin, Al Huri, Al Shasha, and Al Sambuk are all types of traditional wooden boats used by the fishermen of the Gulf to combat the swelling waves and high winds to secure a good catch. Traditional fishing concentrated either on catching surface fish or catching deep sea fish using fishing lines. However, the breeding habits of the fish were well known to the fishermen, and it was at these times that other fishing tools, such as nets and cages, called garagir by the locals, were used. These cages were made from threads and branches of certain trees. They were designed to allow fish to enter the cage through a slanted opening that would, however, make it difficult for the fish to exit. Most fish share the same name amongst the countries of the Gulf except for a few. Some of the most well-known types of fish in the Gulf area 
are the Kan'ad, the Safi, the Hamur, the Shiri, the Habbar, the Sharkha, shrimps, and different types of tuna such as the Jaythar and the Sahu. Fishermen sailed their small boats to the middle of the sea, loaded with fishing nets. Upon arriving at a specific location, the nets were neatly lowered into the water in a straight line. After waiting for a few hours to ensure they were full of fish, the nets would be pulled up on deck. Large schools of sardines migrated to the Gulf area during certain seasons. They passed through the Sea of Arabia and the Gulf of Oman, and their presence was detected by the water, changing colors, and by the concentrated attacks of seagulls. Fishermen's boats were equipped with fishing nets reaching 120 feet in length and 30 feet in width. They would sail to areas that were rich in sardines. The fishermen lowered their nets in a straight line and began hauling the nets, gathering huge amounts of sardines. As quickly as possible, the fish would then be rushed back to cars on standby at the shore. They are then sold at the market or dried to be used as protein fodder for cattle in Oman. Shrimps breed in abundance in the waters of the Gulf, which provides the perfect environment for reproduction and growth. Some of the best quality of shrimps can be found in the Gulf of Oman and the Arabian Gulf. Of course, our government's policy in managing and developing fisheries and ocean resources focuses on the notion of sustainability. By sustainability, we mean maintaining high quality and allowing for future generations' needs of these resources. We also aim to develop and support the Omani economy by maintaining the highest quality possible of the country's fishing industry through value-added manufacturing that provides the fishing industry with a better economic return. The governments of the Arabian Gulf countries understand the importance of fish resources and established ministries and government agencies to manage these resources early on, ensuring that the use of modern scientifically tested methods would maintain fisheries and secure sustainability. Initially, this took the form of supporting fishermen through providing them with new boats, engines, and the necessary equipment for safe fishing. This is one of the ports designated for fishing boats in the Gulf area. It is just one example of many similar ports that are clustered throughout the coast of the Gulf across its different countries. These ports are equipped with fixed and floating docks, gas pumps, and ice makers. The establishment of these ports is intended to protect the boats of fishermen and provide the necessary maintenance. Scientific and research centers are also found in the countries of the Gulf. Each contributes information about fisheries by conducting research within the country's international waters through coastal scanning, fish bed mapping, fish supply, and monitoring environmental changes that impact upon the availability and growth of fish in the area. As a matter of fact, every year Kuwait takes measures in organizing the fishing activities via the Public Authority for Agriculture and Fisheries. 
It enforces rules that prohibit fishing in certain areas that are viewed as fish incubators, prevents certain fishing practices and methods that are considered exhaustive to fisheries and specifies the time frames for fishing in a manner that allows for reproduction and breeding of all kinds of fish. Most countries of the Gulf have established fish farms to increase fish production. The private sector has taken part in the establishment of these farms as a form of economic activity. The tens of farms that exist in the area are capable of providing almost 60% of the local consumption need. As baby fish is one very successful example of farm bred fish in the state of Kuwait. The development of any type of fish, especially El Zubedi fish, is far from easy. It usually requires years of costly research, and this process requires plentiful research over many years. For example, Europe spent 18 years of research before successfully breeding salmon. Quite similarly, the Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research has conducted intensive research to arrive at a successful formula for artificially breeding El Zubaydi fish. This required securing larvae and fish eggs for experimentation, but just how was that achieved? Lizbedi is a very sensitive type of fish. It does not acclimatize to captivity and dies in a matter of days. We then decided to set out to sea to catch ovulating fish. We took the inseminated eggs, not the live fish, to artificial pools hoping the eggs and larvae would go through their normal life cycle. Therefore, the first difficult step is to locate and identify inseminated fish and take the eggs. Water currents and tidal conditions play an important role in determining when the Zubaydi breed. These times are known to be at the beginning of the month, at the early stages of the crescent, and at the middle of the month when a full moon is viewed. When inseminated eggs arrive at the project location, they are washed and processed to separate them. Bad eggs are allowed to sink to the bottom of the pool, whilst the good eggs are placed in freshwater incubators. Incubation takes around 22 hours at the temperature of 27 degrees Celsius and 15 hours at 30 degrees Celsius. The larvae stage begins with the hatching of eggs after they become living organs. They are then moved to new pools that are populated with green seaweed and small organisms that fish feed on.
Once the stage is successfully completed and the fish reaches three years of age, research centers on the provision of food and the chemical balances that are necessary for the fish to reproduce and breed in the pools. Fish farms in the Gulf region differ in terms of the water used. Some use salty seawater, while others use pure water depending on the type of fish being bred. The success in breeding fish has contributed to increasing the fish reserves of the entire region. However, despite this and the cruelty of the sea, around 50,000 licensed fishermen still sail daily to different fishing beds far out to sea. The proper times for fishing differ according to the type of fish to be caught. Their boats dock to quickly unload the fresh fish into special trucks that transport the catch directly to market or to factories for further processing. Here we can see one of the many fish processing factories in the Gulf region. When the fish first arrive, they are washed with cold water to reduce the temperature and placed in special containers that are then sent to cooling fridges at 40 degrees below zero. Fourteen hours later, the fish is removed from the coolers and the processing begins. According to need, fish is cut into either fillets or as requested by certain companies and then frozen again. Afterwards, the fish is removed from the freezers and packed as needed to be exported to other countries. All fish factories in the Arabian Gulf are built according to international specifications, measures and health standards. Let's take a look at the markets of the world. There are some markets that are considered viable to the industry due to the high prices of fish. Those are generally in Europe, Japan, parts of Asia, and the United States of America. The Sultanate and the other countries of the Gulf process fish according to the conditions and regulations applied by these markets. Hasib, for example, requires knowledge of critical points and is of course expensive. It also requires special training and qualification for the staff of processing factories. Here in the Sea of Arabia exists the most extensive points of fish traps that produce almost 40,000 tons of fish mounting to 33% of the entire fish reserve of the Gulf region. Oman is the biggest producer with a share of almost 41% of the entire Gulf production. This is a modern fishing vessel that is equipped with the latest technology and communication equipment. Companies and fishermen with large means use such vessels. They use nets to catch certain kinds of fish. Tens of fishing companies are active in the Gulf under strict supervision from the authorities that are keen to protect the fish reserves from ill manipulation. Fishing vessels are only allowed in certain areas as specified by the authorities. The fish is marketed directly in all Gulf countries 
where factories process, wrap, and export the catch to over 40 countries around the world. The Arabian Gulf region is a significant source of good quality and delicious shrimp that ensures a great economic return. Research activity in which all GCC countries have participated was conducted. Several meetings were held between the concerned officials in those countries and coordinated between regulatory authorities to ban shrimping during certain seasons to allow shrimps to reproduce and breed and to avoid unsustainable practices. The countries of the Gulf were always keen on protecting the marine environment and its biological diversity. The warm depths of the Gulf are richly populated with many tiny organisms and beautiful coral reefs. Protection laws have been put in place for the purpose of sustaining the diversity, richness and beauty of the Gulf. Governments have different laws of protection where catching fish and shrimps are banned during certain seasons. There are areas where fishing is prohibited year-round. However, there are some areas where fishing is allowed during certain periods of the year, but not at others. Despite the rapid economic, social and industrial development that the countries of the Arabian Gulf are experiencing and the reflection of such development on the style of life in the region's cities, they have paid particular attention to sound practices and have taken all the necessary measures to maintain a safe and sustainable marine environment at the very early stages of this development.